In this session, I'm going to show you how I created this custom photo collage using a graduation cap. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So today we're going to tackle how to create a custom frame. This happens to be a graduation cap photo collage. And um, so let's get started. I'll show you exactly how I did it. Now, uh, you will need Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint in order to complete this process. Uh, there is a way to do this with um, free software as well. Um, however, uh, this tutorial focuses on using Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to search for a graduation cap uh, as my inspiration for creating this. So um, what I did is I went into my graphics and this is the inspiration that I use. So you may be asking why I'm not using this to begin with. If you're creating things for your own personal use, yes, you can absolutely use this. But when you're selling products on Etsy or Shopify, it's really important that you are creating your own graphics so that no one is going to claim a copyright on the graphics that you are using when you go to resell. And that's why I am creating my own graphics so that I don't run into that problem. So. To recreate this, what I did is I went into shapes and I placed, I started by placing a shape on my desktop. I went to shape and I changed that shape to a diamond. And then I just tried to re recreate that the graphic of the cap. Uh, I then placed another shape on my workspace and I placed this graphic shape on my desktop. Now, what I did from here is I just made it a lot larger and just to kind of, again, to recreate the cap. Uh, now I changed the color to black and change that to black and now I added a border to the diamond and that is a white border so that I could see the outline of the uh, cap. Now I'm just going to push this one behind so I can see the border a little bit more clearly and I'm going to increase the border on the diamond. So I'm just going to increase the weight and what I'm going to do also is just make that a little bit larger because I want to be able to place pictures in the bottom here and pictures that I can actually see. The next thing that I did is I added a um, line. I added a line and I rotated this line so that I can move it over here. Now, I'm not going to exactly attach the line to my cap. I'm, I'm going to move it as close as possible, but I'm not going to attach it because I want that to be a separate frame altogether. And when all the frames are uh, attached, that creates one single frame where you have to put one picture in that whole frame. So I'm just going to leave that like that right now, and I'm going to add and I'm going to increase the line weight just to make it a little bit larger. And now I'm going to add a circle and I'm going to make that circle black and make it a whole lot smaller. And that will be part of my tassel. Just make that a little bit smaller too. And I'll move that to the center there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I don't need this anymore really, so I'm just going to get rid of it and I'm going to go into draw and I'm going to use my marker to make the tassel. So I'm just going to check the line weight. I'm going to make that a little bit larger like that. And I'm just going to 
kind of make a makeshift tassel like that. Now, probably would be better if you had an iPad. You could probably use an iPad with your pencil tool. My iPad is in another room right now, so I'm stuck using my, my mouse. Uh, anyhow, for the sake of showing you how I'm doing this, this, this is how I, I did it. So my next step is to add a table. Now that I have my table on my workspace, the next thing that we need to decide is how many cells are we going to have to put photos into? How many frames do we need? And that's very, very important uh, because each one of these cells is going to represent a photo, so, so to speak. So we'll have three here, one, two, three, and then we'll have one, two, three columns up here, and then we'll have one on either side. So in total, we're going to need five columns and two rows. So we need to add two more columns and we'll need to remove a couple of rows. So I'll come up here to where the three dots are and I'll add two more columns. And then I'll just get rid of some rows. Delete row and delete row. Okay. So I'm now going to position this up top and the and I'm going to change the color of the lines to white. So I'll come here and I'll select the I'll select white so that we can actually see where the lines are going to be. And I'm just going to make sure that these are coming all the way outside of my diamond because I don't want it to, to interfere with where the frames are going to um, occur. And I'll also just extend that down here. Now, the one thing that you want to watch out for is wherever you've got a line, that is going to split up that cell. So you want to make sure that you don't have lines where you don't want them to be. Like you cannot put a picture in that bottom corner piece in here. So if you've got something like that and you don't intend to put a picture in that bottom corner or in here, then just extend that down so it's not breaking up that cell. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to download this as a PNG. Okay, so PNG, and we're only downloading page two. So I'm going to come here and I'm just going to download page two. And there it is right there. Now I'm going to go into a website called convertio.co. This is one of my favorite websites. And I'm going to grab that file and I'm going to drag it in the center. And so here's that file. And in here is where we determine what we need to convert the file to. So I want to convert this file to vector and SVG. So I'll just come here in this orange button here and say convert. And once it's done, I'll get a blue button uh, for me to download. Okay, and here's the download button. So I'm gonna select download and there it is, it's up there. So now remember at the beginning, I said we needed either Microsoft Word or PowerPoint in order to complete this process. So I'm going to open up Microsoft Word and I'm going to open up a blank document. And a lot of people get confused at this point because we need to import that SVG file. Uh, however, a lot of people feel like Word uh, can't import SVG files, but in fact it can. So this is the process to import the SVG file. You would go to insert, you would go to picture, you would go, you would find your, fi your file wherever it is. Uh, it's in my downloads file. So I'm going to go to my downloads. Here it is right here. That's that SVG file. And I'm going to say insert. And here it is. So here is my SVG uh, vector graphic. So 
With PowerPoint and Microsoft Word, you get the option to convert it to a shape, and that's what we're going to do. So you can come up here and you can convert it to a shape. And now we can select it and we get the option to go in and format the shape. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill the shape with a picture and I'm just going to use stock images. Uh, it can be any image at all. It doesn't matter what image you put in there. So I'm going to select this one and I'll say insert. Now, the image is just a placeholder. That's all it is. Uh, we're creating frames. The, the image acts helps to create the clipping mask. So at this stage, what we're going to do is we're going to go into file. And we're going to save this file as a PDF file. So I'm going to name it as my grad cap photo collage. And I'm going to change the file type to PDF. And I'm going to save it in my downloads folder so that I can easily find it. And I'll say save. Okay, so we're done that. Now we're going to head back over to Canva. And we're going to, I'm going to add another page. And what we need to do now is we need to upload that PDF file into Canva. So we're going to come to uploads and we are going to upload that file. So here it is. That's my PDF. And I'll just come here and say open. Now here it is Canva working its magic. Um, now, one thing that I've had a lot of problems with lately, which you might as well, is when you're uploading your files, especially PDF files, sometimes you they seem to disappear. You don't know where they are. And that happens to me too. Don't panic. Um, I can't find that file, but I know it's here. Don't worry. So what I do is I go back to the home page and here is that file in my recent designs. I just uploaded it just now. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to select all of those elements and I'm going to say copy. Control C. And I'm going to head back over to the workspace where we were working and I'm going to paste that uh, PDF document in here, which is really, it's just a frame. So this is my PDF document. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, well, that's not really a frame, but it is. Okay, bear with me just one second, one more minute. Okay, when you click here and you press delete, you're deleting the image and leaving the frame. So here it is, your frame. You just delete everything here and you've now created your photo collage. And even in this one, but this one, you know what I've been doing is I've just been filling it with black so that it's the tassel. So before I continue, I just want to mention to you that I have opened up channel memberships. And one of the channel memberships is a complete 50 video uh, Canva tutorial that will take the mystery out of your confusion for using Canva. If you're confused, every time you open up Canva and you don't know where the tools are or you don't know where something is, you close Canva because you get so frustrated, you need to join my Sterling Silver membership. It will take the confusion out of designing with Canva. You'll learn things that you never knew existed. So I do highly recommend that you join there is a private Facebook group where you will get uh, support and feedback. And you also get access to my shop where I have some digital downloads and some Canva templates for you to help with your designs. Getting back to the grad cap collage, what you can do is you can add some text in here. So you can add the year. 2024 and uh, a good font to use is the Wildcat College font is really, really good. 
so you can make that larger and that can be your 2024 there and then you can add another heading that says congratulations up at the top right here and that my friends is pretty much it i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to be notified when new content comes out for now my friends i will say bye bye until next time